This is the Turf Zone Podcast, your central information and news hub, bringing together professionals from turf associations across multiple states to share things to help you in your business. Brought to you in partnership with our friends at the Mississippi Turfgrass Association. Now, let's get in the zone. Welcome to the Turf Zone. In this episode, we feature an article titled Plant Growth Regulators Lend a Hand by Paul Bartley, PhD, Assistant Professor, Department of Horticulture, Auburn University. Contributing Jeff Atkinson, PhD, Harrells, and Alex Hedgepath, Auburn University. Since discovering and understanding plant hormones, plant growth regulators, PGRs, both naturally and synthetically derived, have been used to suppress or promote plant growth. Their applications have varied from industry to industry to address varying critical issues. In the 1950s, early adopters like the grape and apple industries primarily used PGRs for blossom and fruit thinning to improve marketable yields. The floriculture industry has used PGRs extensively for half a century to meet the plant specifications of their picky clientele. I'm looking in the mirror here. In the 1970s, utility arborists began applying PGRs commercially to combat the age-old problem of trimming trees away from utility lines. But for the professional landscape operator, PGRs haven't become mainstream. Instead, their utilization has been more niche. Take Auburn University's campus, for example. With over 700 acres of landscape to maintain, the use of PGRs is primarily limited to maintenance hazards. We'd like to start using more PGRs on campus, but right now we are only using them around fences and barriers that are difficult to mow around, said Wes Miller from Auburn University Landscape Services. So, why aren't PGRs more widely used in landscape management? The research convincingly favors their applications regarding enhanced blooming, improved plant health, and less frequent pruning. Like many changes to common practice, market penetration and adoption rates are primarily driven by economics. That is exactly what the research could not demonstrate convincingly, at least not 10 to 20 years ago when most of the work was conducted. Things have changed. Today, the value-added proposition is less about economics and more about labor conservation. With an evaporating labor pool and demand for services at an all-time high, landscapers like Toby Hughes with Auburn Grounds, Inc. have begun incorporating PGR products into their management practices. For them, it wasn't as much about economics as it was about managing labor reallocation and boosting morale. Our guys hate pruning. It was easy to convince them to spray PGRs instead of picking up the hedge trimmers. Others, like Dennis Pritchett from Jubilee Scapes, thinks it's a win-win, a game-changer. Our customers receive a healthier plant, and we save three or four crews a summer of pruning. The manufacturers are doing a better job educating, and that's helping us communicate the advantages to our clients. The manufacturers are noting the change as well. I've had about twice as many requests to present on landscape PGRs this year compared to the last three or four years prior. Dr. Kyle Briscoe, Senior Technical Development Manager with CPRO, remarked. He added, I think the labor market is driving a lot of first-time use. For those looking for an extra hand, it's essential to understand the various PGR formulations available in the market and how they might be best utilized. Granular. It's challenging to beat the simplicity of a granular application. Measure the application area, weigh the granules, and evenly distribute them across the treatment area. Perhaps this simplicity and our familiarity with granules often lead to misapplications and varying results. You understand if you've ever striped a yard following a granule fertilizer application. Timing is critical with this formulation. Depending on several factors, species, plant size, and environmental conditions, 
granular applied PGRs need time for release, uptake, and translocation to the meristematic regions of the plant. As a general suggestion, those products are best used immediately after pruning. Foliar sprays. Does calibration keep you up at night? Rest well knowing that concentration with liquid foliar applications of PGRs is most important. Relative to granule products, foliar applications are fast-acting. For these reasons, foliar applications have quickly become the preferred method of PGR application in the landscape. Shortly after a flush of new growth, mix the appropriate concentration and apply evenly until drip occurs. Leaf cuticle thickness, plant vigor, and environmental factors may influence the longevity of regulation. For the savvy landscaper, a combination of granule and foliar spray products may extend the effectiveness of PGRs. As always, follow the label to avoid exceeding application thresholds. Soil injection. Trees are often the most significant investment and liability in the landscape. Whether they are century-old oaks, newly planted Princeton elms, or established sugar maples in the middle of a construction zone, arborists and urban forestry specialists utilize PGRs to minimize tree stress. As it's often impractical to apply a foliar spray, the preferred application method for trees and large shrubs is direct soil injection or drenching around the truck's basal flare. Like granule applications, these products will take time to translocate to the meristematic regions of the stems. As always, read the label carefully. The dosage requirements for trees vary by species sensitivity and size. I was told Burton Sperber, founder and head gardener of Valley Crest Companies, once said, the economy can slow, but the grass always grows. If the grass or woody ornamentals are growing a little too quickly for you, consider the new value proposition PGRs have to offer. The products mentioned in this article are only examples of PGR products, not an exhaustive list or an endorsement of any product. Author Paul Bartley, Ph.D., has been an assistant professor Department of Horticulture at Auburn University since 2019. His appointment is 60% research and 40% teaching. He received his BS and Master of Science at Auburn University and his Doctor of Philosophy in Horticulture Science from North Carolina State University. He can be reached by email at paul.bartley at auburn.edu. For all resources associated with this article, check out our show notes. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit us at theturfzone.com. You've been listening to The Turf Zone. For more episodes of The Turf Zone, visit theturfzone.com. And subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.